Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel and I'm now answering question number 6 from the October 2022 International A-Level in Excel Statistics S1 paper. Now this question here, number 6, is about probability and Venn diagrams. We're given a Venn diagram which shows the events A, B, C and D, where P, Q and R are probabilities. We got to write down the probability of a. Okay, so it says write down. Okay, so that's a few little clues there. Write down. Now the word write down implies that you don't have to do much calculation. Okay, and you see that there's three parts and there's three marks. So it means that these these parts must be pretty pretty straightforward basically. So first of all, the probability of A. Now, the probability of A means the probability of all of this circle. Now, the uh, tendency for students is, oh, probability of A is 0 0.13, because it has 0 0.13 next to A. But what it means is the probability of everything inside A. And everything inside A is all of these things. So that, that 0 0.13 is only the part of A that doesn't contain, that's not in B. So the probability of A completely is both of these, because B is completely within A. So it's 0 0.12 plus 0 0.13. Okay, so take care of that. So the, for part one, the probability of A is 0 0.13 plus 0 0.12, which is 0 0.25. So it doesn't really require you to calculate, to be honest. So that's why it says write down. And then for part two, it says the probability of A slash B. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's conditional probability. So the probability of A slash B what it means is the probability of A given B. A given B. Meaning, instead of our sample set being the whole of this Venn diagram, the sample set becomes just B. We are focused now on only the set B alone. So the, all, all, our, all our probabilities must be taken from B. B is our sample set. So we got to find the probability that when you pick pick something from B, then it's going to be A. Now, we know that all of B is inside A. All of B is inside A. So, if I pick something of, from B, it's definitely going to be inside A. There's nothing else, you know, the, the, you know, everything inside B is also part of A. B is part of A. So, the probability of this is going to be just one. It's, it's certain that if I pick something in B, it's going to be in A. Okay, because B is contained within A. Or you can also think of it uh, from the formula you, that the probability of A given B is a probability of the intersection of A and B, means it has to be in both A and B, over the probability of it being B. Well, we can see that that's the probability of A in section B in this case, where B is a subset of A, where it's completely inside A. Well, that is equal to the probability of B over the probability of B, which is basically going to be 1. So whichever way you think about it, the answer is going to be 1. So you only have to just think about this. You don't have to make, show any calculation. You can just put 1. That's fine. And then part 3 says, find the probability of A given C. Now, A given C. So here now, what we're going to do is we're going to change our sample set and make it just C alone. So this is our sample set. We're now looking at this as our sample set. We can only choose from C can't choose from anywhere else. So we've got to find the probability that something is from A, given that we're only looking at C. So if we're only looking at C, and we're trying to pick something in A from C, well, there's nothing in C that belongs to A. So the probability of this is going to be zero. And again, we can think of it as the probability of A given C is equal to the probability of the intersection of A and C over the probability of C. Now, the intersection of A and C is zero. It's, it's an empty set. So that's 0 over the probability of C, which is 0. Okay, so whichever way you look at it, the answer is going to be 0. So pretty simple, first three parts, three marks, write down, and you can even do them without showing any steps, just by thinking about the answers. So that's part A. Now for part B. It says, given that the probability of B complement intersection D complement is 7 over 10, and the probability of C given D is 3 fifths, find the exact value of Q and the exact value of R. Okay, so now, 
what is P B <coughs> complement intersection D complement? Well, it means it has to be outside of B and also outside of D. So it's got to be outside of B and D. So the things that are outside B are 0 0.13 and things outside D are P and S. Okay, and those there ha has to be outside of B and D at the same time. So only the things outside of B and D are included in this. So it's only P and 0 0.13 and, and S. Q can't be included because it's inside D and of course this 0 0.12 is inside B. So basically what that means is as we just mentioned, the probability of B complement intersection D complement is equal to 0 0.13 plus P plus S. Therefore, we can say 0 0.13 plus P plus S is equal to 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.77 over 10. So we can from here deduce that P plus S is 0 0.7, take away 0 0.13, that's 0 0.6, 0 0.57. So we can say P plus S equals 0 0.57. Now that's one equation that we've made from that information. So I can keep that as one equation that we might need later on. All right, so the second bit of information they told us that the probability of C given D. The probability of C given D is equal to 0 0.3 fifths, which is 0 0.6. Okay, so the probability of C given D means we are making D our sample space. And we want to find the probability that something is in C given that it's in D. So our sample space is our, our denominator is Q and R together. So Q plus R. And what part of that circle D is has it contains C? Well, just Q. So Q over Q plus R equals 0 0.6. As again, again, we can think of it as a probability of C intersection D over the probability of D. And the probability of C intersection D is Q, and the probability of D is Q plus R. So we can from here say that Q is equal to 0 0.6 Q plus 0 0.6 R. Just uh, cross multiplying. So we can say here that 0 0.4 Q equals 0.6R. So now we can say that Q is equal to 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2R. All right. So now that's another equation that we have formed from our information that we're given. So we were given two bits of information and we formed two equations. But the, the issue here now is we have three unknowns, P, Q, R, and S. In fact, four unknowns. Right, so that's not enough equations for us to, to solve the problem. However, there is another equation that they didn't tell us directly, but we should know that the probabilities are related to each other in a whole situation is that they all should add up to one. So I can make another equation from that. So I can say that the sum of all these probabilities, which is P plus Q plus R plus S, all of those plus these two, which is 0 0.25, they must add up to one. The sum of all the probabilities in any situation is one. So now I have P plus Q plus R plus S equals 0 0.75. That's now a third equation I've now formed. Okay. Now, what I can see from these three equations, if I look at them, I could try to see a way to solve them to find what one of the letters are. Now, one of the things I can see is P plus S. P plus S is equal to 0 0.57. So if I take the P and the S and add them together, P plus S plus Q plus R equals 0 0.75. I can take the P plus S and replace it with 0 0.57. So I can say 0 0.57 plus Q plus R equals 0 0.75. So Q plus R is 0 0.75 minus 0 0.57. Okay, so Q plus R is equal to have 0 0.75 minus 0 0.57, which gives you 9 over 50, which is 0 0.18. 0 0.18, that's Q plus R. 
So now I have an equation. I have Q plus R equals 0 0.18. Now I can use this. I know that Q equals 3 over 2R. So I can now substitute instead of Q, 3 over 2R. So I have 3 over 2R plus R equals 0 0.18. This is 1.5, so that now becomes 2.5R equals 0 0.18. So R, therefore, is 0 0.18 over 2.5. Okay, so that will give us a value of R. So you have 0 0.18 over 0 0.18 over 2.5 and that gives us 9 over 125 which is 0 0.072 okay that's the value of r good and then we know that q plus r or we can even say um from here we can say that q equals 3 over 2 r so we can say, therefore, Q is equal to 3 over 2 times 0 0.072. So we can take our answer. We can multiply it by 3 over 2, which gives us 0 0.108. 0 0.108. So we now have our value of Q and R. We can say Q is equal to 0 0.108. R is equal to 0 0.072. So that was a bit of a bit of a long one there, but it's worth a few marks. It's worth six marks. So we had to make uh, two equations from the information given, and the third equation we had to make ourselves from understanding that the sum of the probabilities is equal to one, and then we could use some sort of substitutions to get the answer. So there's the answer to that part B. Now we got to do part C. Now, part C says, given also that the probability of B union C complement is 5 over 8, find the exact value of S. So, B, the probability of B union C complement is equal to 5 over 8. Now, B union C complement, what is that? So, it means all of B and everything outside of C. Okay, so that means basically, if you think about it, the way they've outside of B, it's inside of B, sorry, B union C complement. That means you include all of B and C complement means everything outside of B. C, sorry, it's that, that, and that. All of those together, they give you 5 over 8, right? So they could have just mentioned C complement. B union C complement. That would have included that as well anyway. Anyway, maybe they're just trying to confuse us there, but yeah, B union C complement means everything else, everything inside B, which is this. Union with means or everything outside of C. So it's all these. Okay, anyway, no problem. That's 0 0.1, 0 0.25, which is these two together, plus R plus S equals 5 over 8. Okay, so now we want to find the exact value of S. So we know something about R and S from here, do we? From before, one of our equations was P plus S equals 0 0.57. Okay, oops. We had P plus S equals 0 0.57. Okay. Um, and, well, well so we, we, oh, we have the value of R, actually. We already have the value of R. What am I doing? We know the value of R already. The value of R is what we found here, which is 0 0.072. So that's, that's fine. So we know that R is 0 0.072. We already found that, 0 0.072. So now we can find what S is very easily. So S is going to be 5 over 8 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.072. So we just have to find what that is. It's very simple, that last one. I thought it was a bit more involved, but it's only worth two marks. So we have 5 over 8 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.072 which gives us 0 0.303 0 0.303 and that's the value of s and that concludes this question okay so that's question number six from the october 2022 
Other questions from this S1 paper can be found in the playlist over here. That's from the October 2022 exam. Other questions from probability and Venn diagrams from S1 in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.